What's going on guys, it's Zero bringing you another Call of Duty Ghost gameplay commentary. Today we're going to be playing uh, Kill Confirmed on the map, Fog. And I want to start this out with a disclaimer. I'm not an Optic Gaming fanboy. Some people think that I'm an Optic Gaming fanboy because I've stated in the past that I think that uh, Skump is the best pro player out there. And when I said that, I guess I should have clarified it a little bit. What I meant was that I think Skump has the most potential. You know, I think he has the most raw gun skill and has the potential to be the absolute best player that's ever played Call of Duty. Uh, you know, I really like Clayster as well. The guy is really entertaining. I think he's a hell of a teammate. You know, Embos, I don't really have an opinion on. I haven't seen all that much of him. And I really don't like Nate Shot. You know, I mean, his personality for some reason just grates on me to the point where I can't even stand watching his videos or stream. Uh, the reason I wanted to get that out of the way is that today I wanted to talk about the pros. Uh, you know, there are several pro teams for those of you who don't follow Call of Duty Competitive that have kind of colluded to uh, the Blacklist Optic Gaming. And how they hope to accomplish this is that they just decided, you know what, we're not going to uh, scrim against them anymore. You know, the way I see it is in life, like, okay, let's just say, for example, if I started a Call of Duty professional team, and we'll just name it something really cheesy like Zero's Heroes, you know, my team would be the most prepared team that has ever played Call of Duty. You know, they would put in the most practice, they would, you know, watch game film, they would understand their opponent's tendencies. You know, if we lost then lack of preparedness would not even enter into the conversation. You know, I would want people who are willing to put in the time, the effort, and the dedication to become great. You know, because excellence is one of two ways that you can really grow your brand. You know, by grow your brand, I don't mean just like a team brand. It could even be your personal brand, you know, how you work. Because your name is a brand. You know, who you are is a brand. You're, whenever you try to do something, like get a promotion or apply for a job, you're basically marketing yourself. So... You can uh, grow your brand by excellence, by refusing to accept mediocrity, by only accepting excellence. And the other way, which is what a lot of these uh, Call of Duty pros seem to be taking, is, uh, you know, the other approach is uh, tearing other people down. And you guys have all worked with somebody who is, uh, you know, kind of been like the work snitch, the work tattletale, who tries to get everybody else in trouble. And the reason that they do that is that, you know, they're trying to make themselves look better by comparison. Like, they don't think that they can, uh, you know, that their work ethic or that their work itself stands out enough for, you know, them to just to stand out based on that alone. So they feel that they have to tear other people down so that they look better by association. And that's what these other pros are doing, man. And that's just, I just don't understand that. Like they gave two main reasons for uh, wanting to blacklist Optic. One was that when they scrim Optic, that win or lose, no matter how they play, that their Twitter feeds absolutely blow up with Optic fans, you know, just giving them hell. You know, I mean, they've gotten death threats, they've been called racial slurs, they've been called homophobic slurs. And I understand that nobody should have to put up with that, you know. I mean, it's 2014 and people are still saying stuff like that. I mean, come on, guys. The other flip side to that is, you know... You guys are Call of Duty pros, and the pro in Call of Duty Pro stands for professional. You know, you guys get paid to play a video game. I mean, I'm going to repeat that again because th that is worth repeating. You get paid to play a video game. That is how you make your living. You play a video game. Now, do you know how many people would love to be in that position? I mean, if I was tomorrow, if somebody came up to me, let's just say, for example, that... Let's just say that uh, Curse wanted to start a Curse Ohio team. And they said, you know what, Zero, we want you to be the captain of the Curse Ohio team. Before they would even finish that sentence, I would have a pen in my hand and be screaming, give me the contract, I want to sign. You know, I mean, that's, that's something that would be unbelievably amazing. What I definitely wouldn't do is I wouldn't try to, to destroy another organization. I wouldn't try to destroy another organization's brand by doing something stupid like not scrimming with them I mean that's just extremely immature you know I just I honestly I can't think of the words for it because it just bamboozles me so hard that you know that they think that that's an acceptable strategy to even out the fan base which is the second reason that they said that they wanted to uh, to blacklist optic was to try to even out the fan base you know Call of Duty is saturated now I mean there's about a million different Call of Duty YouTube channels there's a lot of Call of Duty streamers the only way that you're going to get more viewers is to be entertaining in your videos. You know, be more entertaining in your live stream, be more entertaining in your videos, and the viewers will come. You know, I started watching quite a few uh, different pro players on stream and on YouTube because I watched them scrim other teams and, you know, they were really interesting. So that, that's how you're going to get ahead. You're not going to get it off 
by cutting your nose off to spite your face. Now that's what these teams are doing. What they don't realize is that Optic Gaming is, you know, they have about 60% of the Call of Duty fan base. So if they were successful in quote unquote destroying the Optic brand, then Call of Duty Competitive would lose about 60% of its fans immediately. Now if they lose 60% of their fans, then these events with these cash prizes aren't going to be able to offer such large cash prizes anymore. You know, if, if uh, Optic leaves and instead of a, you know, a $1 million Call of Duty Championship, we may have a $400,000 Call of Duty Championship. Because the reason that, uh, that these championships can offer prize money is because they make money off of them. You know, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. They're doing it because they make money doing it. And they make money through sponsorships. And sponsors want to see high attendance at the events. They want to see high views when they stream the, uh, the tournaments. So if you cut out over half of your fan base right there, then you're really hurting yourself. I mean, yeah, it hurts Optic as well, but it's an extremely, extremely short-sighted uh, plan. You know, let's say, for example, an example of why Optic being big helps the rest of the Call of Duty competitive scene. Let's say that uh, Ford decides that, you know what, this Call of Duty scene is blowing up. We want to get in on it. And they sponsor Optic. You know, that's great. Optic is now getting, uh, getting Fords to drive. They're getting more sponsorship money. And, you know, Ford is sponsoring tournaments now, so the tournament prize pools get bigger. So right there is one thing that's going to help you immensely. You know, the prize pools get bigger, then you have a chance to win more money. Another thing that they're not thinking of is Ford has a competitor. They're not the only people out there that make autos. You know, if Ford gets into the uh, Call of Duty competitive sponsorship, then Ford's competitors are going to want in on, want in on it as well. Chevy's not going to think, well, we're just going to let Ford corner this, uh, this segment of marketing. No, Chevy's going to start sponsoring teams as well. And Ford and Chevy aren't going to both sponsor the same team. So if Optic gets a Ford sponsorship, then Chevy's going to sponsor a different team. You know, I mean, just like uh, basketball shoes. You don't see multiple athletes being sponsored, or you don't see an athlete being sponsored by multiple shoe brands. So, you know, what Optic gets, the other teams will get as well. So it's just really short-sighted. I mean, they're kind of trying to destroy their own scene by doing this. And it's just ignorant. And if I was the manager of a team, I wouldn't allow it. Well, guys, till next time, this is Zero Saying. I'll catch you on the flip side.